Alrighty, scholars, during this week, we are going to continue looking at fractions on a number line. The reason that we're going to continue to review this is not just because, you know, maybe the quiz was a little more difficult than we were used to from last week, but also just because number lines are a super, super useful tool, not only for fractions, but we know we've used them for um, subtracting, we've used them for rounding. Number lines are just a really, really great tool. So I want us to continue to get really familiar with using them. So we will continue to be doing some number line fraction questions. Don't worry, we will be spicing it up a little bit this week. So I just want to let you know that we're going to continue working on that skill. All right. But before we rock and roll into that, I do have to announce my three prodigy champs from last week. So these three friends, Jeremiah, Charles, and Christian, answered the most prodigy questions correctly last week. So not only did they also answer just the most questions, they were taking their time and answering the most questions correctly. So shout out to these friends. Jeremiah answered 89 questions correctly, Charles 68 questions correctly, and Christian 54. That shows a lot of self-determination. That shows a lot of achievement that they were able to not only answer that number of questions, but do so correctly. So these friends are absolutely getting some Vista virtual points. Make sure that we are playing Prodigy. If we do have any extra time if you have any questions about how to like make your prodigy account and stuff like that make sure you check out the resources tab in google classroom because i have a document there that sort of walks you through it if you also forgot your prodigy login information if you go to the student information page which is if you scroll down in classroom you'll also be able to find that and it should have your id there if you made one during the school year with me all right so let's continue with our fractions review we know that the numerator and the denominator of a fraction tell us important information. Last week on the quiz, a lot of us got tripped up or we got questions wrong because you weren't giving me a complete fraction. We were only giving you one of the parts. Like we talked about on Friday, one of the questions, a lot of people put, if you think about it, kind of a silly answer. They told me, oh, the fish swam five inches. I know that you guys meant he swam five spaces, but it's really important that we name the amount of those spaces. So he swam five thirds because there were three equal spaces between zero and one. Now, five thirds we know is a very different number than five holes, so we have to make sure that we're understanding the parts of a fraction. So as a reminder, we know the top number on a fraction is called the numerator and the bottom number or digit of a fraction is called the denominator. They tell us different information because they're kind of like a math code. So our numerator tells us how many pieces or how much of the whole we have or we care about. In this case, we would see one piece would probably be shaded. Maybe we moved one piece on the number line. Our denominator tells us how many equal pieces make up one whole, so how many pieces I would need to make one whole, and it also tells us the name of each piece. For example, I see a five in the denominator here, so I know each piece would be one-fifth. Because I have one-fifth, I say this number as one-fifth. One coming from the numerator, fifth coming from the denominator. That's why they're colored that way to match the labels. We know one fifth would look something like this if we were to model it on a circle. There are one, two, three, four, five pieces. I'll do, go ahead and do that in green. One, two, three, four, five pieces. That's why there's a five in the denominator. And of those five pieces, one is shaded or we have one. That's why there's a one in the numerator. Now let's bring it back to number lines. Say we had a situation like this, one third. On a number line, the numerator would tell us the distance we've traveled on the number line, so where the point is, or how many spaces we count until the point. The denominator is gonna tell us how many equal spaces are between zero and one, or just between any whole. So let's see. Say I have the number line here. We know the denominator tells us how many equal spaces between zero and one, or between any whole. So let's count how many equal spaces are between zero and one. Put your finger on the number line. Put your finger on zero, so your finger should be right here. Put your other finger on one, so your finger should be right here. I should see things like this. There we go. Now we count how many spaces are between those two fingers. We don't necessarily care about what's going on over here to figure out the denominator right now because we just need to count between one whole. So I would count one, two, three. So there are three pieces between zero and one. Our number line, our whole, is broken up into three pieces between zero and one. So I know when I count on this, I'm gonna call each of them a third. I'm gonna call each space A, each space is A, each space is a third, absolutely. So now let's think about our, our numerator, right? Our numerator would be how many spaces we count until the point. 
When we count, I want us to get in the habit of counting by the fractional amount. For example, if I was looking for, sorry, just reminding you that a three will go in the denominator there. If I was looking for one third, what I need to do is count by thirds across my number line until I get to one third. Fortunately, one third means I would go zero thirds, one third. I only need to jump one space because one third of my number line is right here. Let's see if we went ahead and got it correct. Yep, the little smiley face came down. The smiley face is on one third. We got our point correct. Now, let's say I wanted to find, spice it up for us. Let's say I actually wanted to find, I'm going to change this one into a two thirds. What I would do is I would start at zero and I would go zero thirds, one third, two thirds. And then I know my point would be here because I've gone two thirds of, my, of the distance between zero and one. We can keep counting by thirds even past one hole. And I think that's where some of us got tricked last week. Today, we're going to focus more on just count on, on identifying fractions between zero and one. So zero and one hole. But throughout this week, I'm going to be spicing it up by giving us some more fractions that are greater than one hole. But for today, let's just stick between zero and one hole. Alrighty. So last week, we know that we learned two strategies for finding fractions on, on a number line. We learned our counting strategy, which we know is when we find the hole, it's similar to what we just did. We find the hole, we find the space between zero and one, we find the denominator, we count the spaces between zero and one, and then we find the numerator, we jump count like we just did. Always double checking, counting again, because we know we make mistakes, life happens. We also learned the model strategy. The model strategy was helpful for some friends who just need to see it like a picture. So that's when we draw the fraction strip on top of the hole or the holes if there's more than one hole on our number line. So that's when we draw our fraction strip, that's when we draw our bar, we break it apart based on where the spaces are on our number line, we shade the amount of pieces until the point, and then we count. So let's do a quick review of what these two different strategies look like. So say I wanted to find, using the counting strategy, Say I wanted to find this point here. I want to find what that point is here. So to use the counting strategy, I'm going to find my distance between zero and one. My fingers are going to go here and here. I'm going to go ahead and do that in red so it's a little bit brighter. My fingers will go here and here. Then I would count to find my denominator, right? Yep. So I would go here. Sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I know my denominator is going to have an eight. So these are eights. Each piece is n. Each piece is n. Yep, each piece is an eighth. So now what I need to do is I need to find my numerator. So I'm going to count by eights starting at zero. And then we are going to count until we reach the point. So I would say zero eighths, one eighth, two eighths, three eighths. So I know three will go in my numerator here. This point is three eighths of the distance between zero and one on my number line. We also learned about the modeling strategy last week or the model strategy, which is when we draw a picture. So say I would wanna find this point on my number line, right? What we can do is we can draw a model or draw a picture. Even though you guys can't obviously draw on the screen like I am, what you can do is you can actually use your piece of paper and you can trace the number line on the screen. This is something that I used to do when I had to take computer tests because I actually really liked to use the model strategy for my number lines. So what I would do is I would like take my piece of paper and I would put it up on the screen and trace where the endpoints of zero and one were and then trace the little lines and draw my um, fraction bar around that. So for example, what I would do is I would put up my piece of paper, I would draw this line here, I would draw this line here, and then I would make little like dots where all these lines were. I'll do it in another color so you can see. I would make little dots where the lines were on my paper so I knew about how big each of my pieces should be. That way when I took my paper off, all I had to do was connect these like this. Just obviously it's easier to draw on your paper, it's a little harder to draw on your screen. And then I would just draw a line through the dots. And then I would have a model that would match my number line. And in this case, it would even be the same size. So then what I would do is I would know that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces in my fraction strip. So I know that each of those pieces is one eighth because it's broken up into eight equal pieces. And then I would just shade in counting by eighths, very similar to our counting strategy until I hit the point. So I would go one eighth, two eighths, 
three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths. Six out of the eight pieces in my fraction strip are shaded because I am six eighths of the whole number line um, in distance. So I know this point would be six eighths. Whatever strategy you would like to use, totally, totally fine. This week, we're going to continue practicing this number line, and we're going to do it today in the context of traveling. We know that number lines mark distance. Number lines mark. Number lines mark. Yep, number lines mark distance. Number lines tell us distance, and we can find the fractional amount of distance that we have covered. So today, we're going to practice this thinking about distance. When you watch this video, I want you to draw two number lines on your paper so you can follow along with the examples in the video. So I would just draw two number lines, zero to one, and then they'll tell you what to mark them. Alrighty, so just change up my screen so that you can see you should have your piece of paper ready. And like I said, just go ahead and draw two number lines. Mark zero and then one hole on them. So there's my first one. There's my second one. And then in the video, she's gonna give two examples and this way we can just follow along as we watch the video. All right, here we go. How do you show a fraction on a number line? For example, if you are two thirds of the way from your house to the store, where would you be located on the number line? In this lesson, you will learn how to identify a fraction as a point on a number line by dividing the number line into equal parts. Say we want to find out where the fraction two fifths is located on the number line. So two fifths is telling us that one whole has been broken into a total of five equal parts and we're thinking about two of those parts. Let's zoom in on the space between zero and one. The denominator tells us we need to break the space into five equal parts. One, two, three, four, five. Remember the parts must be equal. So just in case you weren't going on, make sure that we go ahead and break this first number line up into five parts. One, two, three, Four, we know if we make four lines, it'll be five parts. Sorry, my thing's a little blurry there. And then it wants us to mark two fifths. I want you to go ahead and try to do that on your own first. Give you about 30 seconds before the video reveals where we should be marking it. About 15 more seconds. Which point do you think two is two fifths of the distance between zero and one? Use whatever strategy you would like to. All right, let's see if we get it correct. The numerator tells us to think about two of those equal parts. So we will start at zero and count the distance of two parts. One, two. This point on the number line shows where two fifths is located. Here we are talking about two parts out of a total of five equal parts. Let's see how this might work in a problem. Tammy's house is one mile from her school. So our whole distance is one mile from Tammy's house to the school. Let's show Tammy's location on the number line if she has walked three eighths of one mile. In this problem, the denominator eight tells us that we need to divide the number line into eight equal parts. Since 8 is an even number, I will divide the number line right down the middle into two equal parts. Now that I have two parts, I will divide... Just pausing here real quick, because she's about to give us a really great strategy to make sure our equal parts for 8s are even. So make sure that you are following along. I'm going to leave my screen like this for a little bit, just so you can see me following along, just like you should be doing. At those parts down the middle to make four equal parts. Now I will divide each of the four parts right down the middle to make eight equal parts. Now the numerator tells us that we're thinking of three equal parts. So we'll start at zero 
and count three equal parts. One, two, three. This point marks three eighths on the number line because we're thinking of three equal parts out of a total of eight equal parts. So we're going to continue thinking about fractions on a number line like this today using the idea of like starting at a house and then walking to the park or walking somewhere else to just follow along with me. All right, so for this example, I was starting at my house and I was going to walk to the store. In my pretend world, this is what my house looks like, even though I actually live in an apartment, but that's fine. So when I'm at my house, I haven't gone anywhere, so I know this point is zero. And so I'm, you know, I'm walking along, I'm walking to the store and I get a phone call. It's my sister. She's reminding me that, hey, you actually have to pick up food for Buffy in addition to just the regular groceries. Buffy ran out of food. So I haven't gotten all the way to the grocery store yet, right? Like I haven't traveled my one whole distance. So I want to know how far had I traveled when I got the phone call? How far of the distance to the grocery store or to the market had I traveled when I'd gotten the phone call? So the way we're going to do this is first, let's try that tracing strategy that I was talking about before. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your piece of paper. You're going to hold it up. So that's why you see it right here. You're going to hold it up. And I just want you to trace the end points. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to trace. It might be a little bit bigger than half your paper. Life will go on. So I'm just going to trace the end points and I'm going to put little dots where those slashes are. So when I did that, this is what I get. It is a little bit bigger than half my paper, but that's okay. So I know this is zero and this is one. And literally all I did was I held up my paper and I drew on my paper because you can kind of see it through it, right? I know that we did some of that in art class when you guys were tracing stuff. So this is just a, another helpful strategy. And I'm going to connect the zero and the one because this is my whole number line. This is the whole distance from the from my house to the market. And these were the two pieces that my number line had been broken into. Now, the phone call emoji or the little thing, the point's right here. So I need to identify what fractional amount that point is. So let's go ahead and let's do the counting strategy for this one. So what I would like you to do, count to find the denominator, then count to find the numerator, and then let's see if you correctly label this point. I'm going to give you about mm, 30 or so seconds to do this problem. All right, so when you hear the music stop, that is your signal that you need to be done. Remember, you're using the counting strategy, so I should see you counting for the denominator and then counting for the numerator. All right, that was our 30 seconds. So follow along to make sure you did what I'm about to do. So we know for our counting strategy, the first thing we do is we find our whole. We find our, yep, so zero and one right here. That's exactly what my number line is. So now I'm going to count the even spaces between zero and one. One, two, three. So I know that in my denominator for each and every single one of these pieces, it's going to be a three because I'm apparently counting by thirds. I'm just going to chop my one and a half there. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to count until I reach my point, right? So in this case, I go zero thirds. We always start at zero thirds because we haven't actually gone anywhere yet. That would be like starting to count right here. I'm still at home. I haven't moved anywhere. Zero thirds, one third. So I know that where this point is, is one third. So when you go up to your form, this is actually going to be question one when we do our form along with our guided practice. So if I go up to my form, I just have it in a separate tab up here. It says Miss Cup was walking to the store. Her sister called before she got all the way to the store to remind her to get Buffy some food. We know that she called me when I was one third of the distance from home to the market. So I was one third of the way there. It's going to type it in fraction form, making sure my one is in the numerator because I went one equal space of the one, two, three equal spaces to get all the way there. We know if we kept labeling this, this would be two thirds and three thirds. All right, so we type in one third. Okay, let's go do this next one. So again, I'm still walking 
And I get a little bit hungry as I'm walking to the store. And apparently I decide to stop for a snack. I stopped for this snack right here. My snack was ice cream because it was really hot outside. I know it's really hot in Phoenix right now. So I wanted to get some ice cream to cool down. How far had I traveled when I stopped to get some ice cream? All right, so what you can do is you can either add this point onto this number line or we can continue our practice. Go ahead and take your paper and trace it again. My paper is going to cover up my camera for a little bit. Not a big deal. As I just trace the end point, trace the end point and the two little dots in the middle. There we go. So I did the same thing that I did before. This is a really great strategy. So here is zero. Here is one hole. Draw your line through. And let's see, how far was I? If I know my point is right here when I got my ice cream, how far is that? Maybe you can even use the number line above. I'm gonna give you about 20 seconds to think about this answer. About five more seconds. Where is this point? Okie doke. So what's cool about showing our work like this is even though this is technically question one, right? And then if I were to draw my horizontal line, this is question two. If you notice, my number lines are equivalent here because they have the same zero spot and they have the same one. So the hole is actually the same size. Because the hole is the same size, the distance between my house and the market, and because it's the same size on my paper, I can actually use my labeling for my previous question to help me out, right? So I can still use my counting strategy, which we're going to practice again right now, or I can look at the fact and say, okay, looking at my number line above, I see that, that this number line that I just drew is also broken into one, two, three spots, right? So I'm one piece, two piece, three pieces, just like it was up here. But now I notice that it's actually on the second point, which if I look up, my answer should probably be two thirds of the distance between zero and one. Let's double check. So I know if there are one, two, three equal spaces between our zero and our one, that means the denominator for every single one of these is a three because these are thirds. Each piece is a, each piece is a, yep, each piece is a third. So I know if I were counting, I would go one third, two thirds. So I know when I reached my point, I was at two thirds. So I know I have walked or when I decided to buy some ice cream, I had walked two thirds of the distance between my house and the market or between my house and the grocery store. We know then that of course, one whole would be three thirds to label there. So basically what we're doing right now is we're still practicing the same skills. We're just thinking about it in a little bit of a different way. So now I have a little bit different scenario. In this case, I was going to go to the park and I was going to play soccer. As most of my Hadley friends know, I was a big time soccer player. And so Maryvale friends, I really love to play soccer. And so I was going to the park to go play soccer. And I was right here when I got a phone call. It was my mom. She just wanted to say hi. But how far had I traveled when my mom called me? So what point is marked by that little phone emoji right there? I'm going to give you 30 seconds to try this out and you can pick whatever strategy you want. Maybe you want to trace it and draw a model. That's what I might do. Maybe you want to do the counting strategy, whatever you would like to do. Maybe you don't want to trace it. And you just want to replicate that number line up to you. Whatever you would like to do, I'm going to give you about 45 seconds to do it. Ready? Go. You are trying to find the point right there. I'm going to cover it up so you can't see my work yet. Ooh, I almost gave away the strategy that I was using. All 
all righty, that was our time. Let's check it out. Okay, so I used the modeling strategy for this one. And what I did was I looked at my number line and I recreated it. So I knew there was one, two, three, four spaces. So I knew that these were fourths. Each space was A, each space was a fourth, exactly. So I drew my little model underneath and I broke it by literally just bringing down the same tick marks on my number line. And I broke it into fourths because there were four equal pieces. And then I put the dot in the middle, which, cause that's where it was on the picture. And I shaded it until I reached that dot. And I shaded one piece, two pieces. I know each piece was a fourth. So I know the answer is two fourths. Some of you might've also been tempted to say that I was half of the distance between my house and the park. You are also correct. One half, we know we talked about this um, a cup when we were like back in the school building, when we were talking about equivalent fractions. You are absolutely right. I am one half of the distance between my house and the soccer field. Because if I went like this, I have two equal pieces. So I know two fourths and one half mean the same amount. I've traveled the same distance. So if you did want to say half, you are also correct. So if you wrote two fourths or if you wrote one half, you are correct because two fourths of a distance between zero and one is the same thing as having one half because two is half of four. So if I need four pieces to make a whole and I have two of them, I have half of the amount of pieces. Either way you want to think about it. We'll start talking more about like a true equivalency in the next probably week. But just want to remind you that, yeah, you're still right if you said that was one half. All right. I'm going to go ahead and pause here to make sure that we are putting in our answers into our form. So come back over here. Question two, when I was walking to the store and I stopped for my ice cream snack, make sure you answer that, put that answer in right there. Remember, I was two thirds of the distance. And then Miss Cup was walking to the park for the soccer game. That's the question we just did. So. We know that I walked two fourths of the distance. You can also put one half in here. They are the same amount. I'm gonna put two fourths just because that was the strategy I used. All right, so before we get into our last question, I did wanna do our word of the day. All right, scholars, so our word of the day for today or our magic word is the word breathe. It's the word breathe because I know that we are nearing the end of our school year really important that we're doing our work. It's also really important to acknowledge the fact that like, if you are getting distracted, or if you need a break, you can totally pause the videos at any point, like take a quick brain break. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're actually going to do something that's very similar to true north, which we would do in circle on Fridays to sort of like, use our breath to calm our bodies down or to get our minds nice and focused. So what I really like about this one is it's kind of fun to do. So what's going to happen is when you see the little fishy, so here's our little fishy. He'll pop up in a second. When you see him floating up like you just did, you're going to breathe in. You'll see it right here. And when you see him float down, you're going to breathe out. Okay. It's only, it's less than a minute long. So let's just do some breathing to help us stay nice and calm. So now you breathe out. And last one out. Nice job. So anytime you're feeling like you might be a little stressed or like maybe you're, you know, on the quiz and you're feeling a little nervous or something, or if you just really need to focus your brain, I invite you to remember this little fish friend and think of him floating up and breathing in and floating down and breathing out. A really good way to help us stay calm. All right. Let's get to our last question of today. So again, back to the situation where I was walking to the park to go play soccer because we know soccer is my favorite sport. And as I was walking to the park, I realized 
I had forgotten to bring a drink. And I know that it's super important to stay hydrated. It's so hot outside that if you are outside, you really gotta be making sure that you are, you know, drinking water or drinking Gatorade. And so I decided I was gonna treat myself and I went and I bought my favorite flavor of Gatorade, which is the light blue frost flavor. I wanna know how far had I traveled when I stopped to buy the Gatorade? Here's the thing I wanna point out. If you'll notice, the number line here is broken into one, two, three, four pieces, but my dot is in the middle of one of those four pieces. So what I want you to do, similar to the video that we watched, draw a number line with fourths and then break your fourths in halves. See how many pieces you have now. Then you can use any, any strategy you would like to count. So I'm gonna give you about 35 seconds to solve this guy. And then we can rock and roll. I'm gonna cover up my work so you can't see what I'm doing, but I am doing this problem with you. All right, go. About 10 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. Gave you a little bit of extra time there. All right, so this is what I went ahead and I did for this. I did the accounting strategy for this problem. So what I did was I drew my number line. I broke it first into fourths, which is what the number line here was. So if you traced this number line, you would have had a number line that was broken into fourths because there was only four pieces that were marked on this number line, right? But as you notice, my Gatorade where I stopped was in between one of those fourths. It was right here. So because I knew it was in between, it was in the middle of one of those fourths, what I did was I just broke each of the fourths into two pieces. And then I knew that I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. So I knew that each of these were eighths. Each piece was an eighth, exactly. So that's what I did. And then I wrote eight in my denominator for all my pieces. And then I count, and then I put the point where it was. I knew that the point was in between this and this, or in this case on my third tick mark. So I counted one eighth, two eighths, three eighths was where my point was at. So at this point, I guess I stopped three eighths of the distance from my house to the park in order to get some Gatorade. So today we practiced marking and drawing and using the variety of strategies that we learned in order to correctly solve points on a number line. What you're gonna do for your independent practice is very similar to this. So you are more than welcome to use any of the strategies. You can bring your paper up and you can trace on the computer. You can draw a model underneath, you can count underneath, whatever you need to do to solve, go for it. If you finish early, I do want you to go ahead and do some practice on Prodigy because I have given you guys some questions that will really, really help you on Prodigy. Reminder, I am giving points to those Prodigy champs each week. So make sure that you're rocking and rolling. If you have any, any, any questions, please go to Office Hours with Mr. Cody or Ms. Hendricks today. Happy solving.